Front Woods Farmer here. I think what we're going to do today is we're going to actually uh, get started on the greenhouse build. Uh, we're doing a we're going to do a 12 by 8 greenhouse. It's not going to actually be on the ground. We need to make it movable. So you're not going to get so much heat from the ground. But I'm going to put uh, the skids only 4 by 4s and 2 by 6s for the deck. So we'll still get some heat. It's not going to be like four feet off the ground. Uh, that's what we're going to do today. So uh, sit down, relax, come join us. We're going to build this greenhouse and maybe it's uh, something that you could use in the future for your, your greenhouse plan. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's the same way I build all my coops, chicken coops, sheds, outbuildings, put everything on skids. That way I can move it around if you know I have to or if I don't like it or I want to use it for another purpose around the property so uh yeah let's go let's get to it today. you can see that that board has an arch in it so when we build the deck whether we're using that for our outside beams our inside joists whatever it may be we're going to put the weight down on there so it has to compress that'll actually give it more strength overall All right, change of plans again. Found two two by eights in the middle of the hay wagon covered by wood. So I'm gonna get those out of there and we're just gonna do everything in two by eights instead of two by sixes. And that's just life. It works out like that sometimes. Wasted a couple hours, but hey, it'll be stronger when we're done with it. by eights now we're going to get started we're going to do is we're going to run our two outside two by eights we're going to join in our end caps hopefully cut a piece for a filler in between i'll show you how to double in double up the ends tie them in then we're going to start laying our joists out every two feet then cover our deck build our walls put it on skids put it all together put a roof on it and I'll show you guys how to do that. It's pretty easy. It's not a step-by-step -step every single screw, but it's gonna get you guys able to get started and start building your own greenhouse shed deck. I don't care if you put an aquarium in it, it's gonna hold whatever you want it to hold. And it's gonna be 16 by eight. So let's go. For any job like this, I set up a couple horses and I make myself a nice workstation to work off of. I hate working from the ground. I need to work from the ground, I will, but there's a time and a place to do that, and this is not it. We're going to make ourselves a nice workstation before we get set up. That way we can do all our cuts and uh, lay out all our lines. Always make sure the night before you, uh, you charge your drill battery. I can't tell you how many times that uh, I went to start a project and my batteries were all dead. <laughs> Had to wait. Either that or get the corded out, which is a pain. See, now these two by sixes ain't gonna go nowhere. And we'll just uh, put a couple for the saw so the saw doesn't move. There we go. Now, I used to do all my cuts with a circular hand saw, so you don't need nothing fancy. These will just give you a cleaner cut. You're more accurate every time. But you don't, you don't have to have this. This is just a nice setup that I have. For you guys that have been watching the channel, you guys know I love a speed square. So we need a speed square, some sort of saw, wood obviously, electric, unless you have battery operated everything. We're gonna use our carpenter's pencil. If you want more information on how to use these speed squares more proper and carpenter pencils and the measurements on everything and how these aren't just things, these are tools. Uh, check out my how to build a lean-to shelter off of a pull bar and I explain, I go a little more in depth but I'm not the, an expert at the speed squares. So YouTube speed squares, you're gonna get a million things popping up. I'll also throw some links down below where you can get wood, speed squares, things like that at your local Lowe's or Home Depot or 
whatever big box stores near you. It's always best to support local, local lumber yards. That's how everybody stays in business. So uh, don't forget to do that. Also, can you guys please hit the like, the subscribe, and the share button? The more you share my videos, the more you like, the more subscribers I get, the more giveaways we're gonna do. It helps the channel. Once we hit 10 subscribers, we're only at eight. Two more subscribers are gonna be our first giveaway. The giveaways I'm hoping are just gonna keep getting better. So like, subscribe, and then we're gonna figure out what we're gonna do with the, uh, the giveaways. I always put a little nail on the side, something to hold my stuff. I always try to run everything around the back if I have the length, extension cords, tripping hazards. I can tell I'm not a fisherman, I'm more of a hunter. Also, I'm a good buddy of mine, BC Bait Company. They're on YouTube, check them out. Good guy over there, bowing them guys. Like to do a lot of fishing, speaking of fishing. Uh, we're gonna do a lot of trail camera hunting reviews. I got a trail camera video up. But uh, if you wanna check out some great fishing uh, footage, and uh, he's also a bait company, he's got the world's best bait right now. And that's not an exaggeration. Every time you throw in, you're catching a fish. And no, he don't pay me or nothing, but Bo, I still do want my BC bait shirt. So if you're watching, please send that. All right, here's my Dewalt saw I've been using for years. I don't even know if they still sell it. Uh, part number is DW. E is in Edward, 575, S is in Sam, B is in boy. It's DWE 575 SB. It's a seven and a quarter circular saw. Now, again, I'm not a circular saw expert, but I love this saw. It has a thick aluminum base plate. Just gonna send some links down there through Amazon and Lowe's and that to see uh, if you guys don't have tools. These are some good tools that I bought years ago and they've last me. My dog chewed the cord out of this one. It's still going strong. When I hook it up to the saw horse to just hang it so I don't have to keep bending over. It's got these nice little holes. It's pretty nice. Here, I'll show you what I mean. So, everything just hangs on there now. And then uh, best bits I found, Black Friday deals are the best, but uh, if you can't wait till Black Friday, I use a lot of cobalt. Uh, bits for my drill. I don't use their tools a lot. I'm not saying their tools are bad, but I just don't use nothing cobalt, but my drill bits. I've learned that uh, these bits hold up the best. And I don't know if they're a lifetime, but a lot of cobalt is. Also, I have found through the years, I've hammered lots of nails and uh, screwed a lot of screws. The best thing that I've found for the money is the exterior decking screws. I'll show you. They're costly if you're not too worried about spending an extra hundred bucks or something. These tips here are the fastest. It's so much faster than nailing. And nailing ain't much cheaper when you really add it up. So you'll see me a lot screwing things when I used to nail. I, I've even used square head nails to do my barn siding sections. But uh, these are the fastest that you're, so if you're building things around the place and you just want to throw them up quick. These construction nails are cheaper too. They're not a, uh, they're not actual exterior. Um, they're not coated, they'll rust, but uh, they work good for, for something quick. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure out all my 16 foot lumber. Make sure it's true 16. Sometimes when you get your lumber, it's 16 foot one, like this. It is 16 foot 11, it's 16 foot on the nose. So your two boards don't match up at the ends you're gonna be out of square. When you're out of square, nothing lines up. So that's like a swear word to carpenters, I guess. I'm not a carpenter, but I can build things. So there's probably a faster way to do this. 16 foot and three quarters. I'm gonna trim all this down to uh, probably 16 foot. So keep in mind, when you're building something, and if it's 16 foot long, and you're using your walls at 16 foot with your deck, if you don't squeeze your walls in, when you put your siding, or your T111, or your rough cut cedar, or any material, you gotta allow for that. So, you know, 16 foot, you can do the deck, squeezing the wall, squeezing the deck, whatever you wanna do. But in this case, we're gonna cut everything down to 16 foot, stay, stay with things like eight, 10, 12, 16 and um, keep saying um because I'm thinking. And yeah, the walls were probably just gonna squeeze into whatever material we are using on the outside, or we might not. We might just use some sort of corrugated stuff. Okay, 
16 foot, I always put a check mark. The point will be at 16, the most accurate way. Mark. earlier about buying things from big box stores but supporting your local lumber store these are big box store this is what you get i don't know if you guys can really see it or not but try to flip it over oh there it is see the swoop it's going to be off square no matter what you do unless you pull it in with your four joists which you need multiple guys here and tools to do Support your local lumber yards. That's what you get. If you have a warp board, you can take it back or they'll discount it normally half off or more. All right, don't know if you're going to be able to see it on camera, but like I mentioned earlier about our crown, we always want our crown up, our arc up. That way it supports the weight better and it's not sagging. So I believe the crown's this way, if you could see that. And this way it goes in. So we'll put this side, our crown side, our arc up. Other crown. It's a bit sagging. Yep. It sags at the end, but there's more of a crown this way. Mark the top, just scribble so we know which way is up. We're going to place both of these boards, this outside board and that outside board, eight feet apart, and start putting together our floor joists. All right, first thing we messed up on, we cut those 16 foot, our floor joists, we're gonna put end caps on each side. So that's gotta suck in an inch and a half for our two by eight and an inch and a half for our two by eight. So we need to shrink those 16 footers down three inches. That way we could fit our two by eights on our end caps because every other floor joist is gonna go in between. That way that'll give us 16 by eight. That way we could work off of eight foot lumber. Uh, eight foot, two foot, one foot, whatever it may be. That way we don't get 16 foot three in the end. And the next thing you know, we're building two eight foot walls and, and it's not working out. So we're gonna cut a few inches off of those. Before you get too far ahead of yourself, just fix your issue. Because if you're, you'll chase that 16 foot three through your walls, through your deck, through your roofing, through everything throughout the build. So we did do two cuts, it was a pain. We had to have them on the horses. It's all right, jump down here. Trim three inches off, something that even builders do. I've worked for builders that uh, we were doing excavating and the engineers built the building too big for a movie theater for the pad it was sitting on. You should have seen that. That was a lot of a delay. Um, don't know how you do that. I always save my scraps around here for blocking, for brush hogs, for farm equipment, for anything. We might even need them on this build. Put them in a pile, don't burn them yet. The more you build, the more you're gonna notice that uh, especially with kids, just time. You wanna to try to save time everywhere you can. Even without kids, if you're in business or if you're farming, time's valuable, don't waste your time. So what we do is we'll lay three or four of these two by eights across, mark them all out. One, two, three, where we want them. Again, we're trimming three inches off to fit in between. It'll give us our eight feet like we just did with our 16. We don't want to mess up again. And um, getting back to what I was saying, mark them all out, get it done. At the end, this little trick I learned, is line them all up. Do one cut and three cuts. That makes sense. We got three boards, we're gonna do three cuts. Ready? saved me from marking three times, picking the board up three times, setting them down three times, three cuts, three cuts, three cuts, all one cut. Marked it once, that's it. We'll do this throughout our build to save time. Another thing you can do if you don't feel like marking, you can stack all this lumber up in a pile, mark what you need, set the saw down about a quarter inch below, make a cut, throw your board off, you got a line right here already started. You don't even have to mark. Next one, board off. Next one, board off. And you could just keep doing that. You could stack it as high as you, you know, you want to go four or five boards at most high. Just keep cutting, scribing, cutting, scribing. So 
That'll save you guys in the long run. If you don't know what I mean, ask and I can do a video, I'll show you. Actually, what we'll do, so we'll do one right now. So say if I had all these boards stacked up, I'm gonna show you. Because if, uh, if you're a visual learner like me, textbook does not work with me, instructions don't work with me, I have to learn by hands on. <laughs> I want you guys to see. All right, so our saws depth is set for past this board. You're just gonna follow this one. This board off that was already cut. Remember, that's like if we were cutting through that board. What's it leave us? You guys can see. It leaves us a scribe, a line. Now what we do, take our saw. Done. And we can keep doing that. Keep stacking, keep saving time. Let's get done with this. It's going to take me a little longer than most because I'm showing you guys this, but it's all right. I like to share my information. Another amateur mistake I just did. Now, we're a little cramped on room, so that's probably why I did it, but I just stacked all of our 2 by 8s right in the middle of our build. So I'll probably have to move those out to get everything lined up, but again, that's how you learn. That's how you get better. All right, Keep visual watching. learners again. We got two two by eights in this pile that we did not cut down three inches. We cut them down three inches in the center because we're gonna have this board and this board on our outside of our deck. So that's an inch and a half thick. That's an inch and a half thick. Cut them all down three inches. We cut these 16 foot down three inches because we got an inch and a half on this end, inch and a half on that end. And we're gonna put our end joists on this end and that end. That's why we did that. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. Okay, this is what I mean. This is why we cut an inch and a half, an inch and a half off. This is 16 foot, remember. This is an inch and a half and says so the other end. If we subtract three inches from our 16 foot and we add our two end joists, that's gonna give us 16 foot total overall length. Is I'm gonna mark every two feet on each side so it'll be quicker. We could just put up our floor joist, screw it in. Floor joist, screw it in. Put our deck on first and then we're gonna jack this whole frame up and uh, put the four by fours under the frame for our skids. We'll put three, one, two, and three, maybe four. So that's our next step. Slip them in, drill them each side, slip them in, screw them in, get done with our floor real quick. Now, this is important, really important if you're laying down um, eight, eight foot or four foot um, plywood. You're gonna measure from your end joist in two feet, four foot, six foot, eight foot. Okay, that's where you want your joists. So to work with eight foot lumber, you're gonna want that on center, they call it. So you measure out to the center of your two by four, right in the center. So I mark that center and three quarters of an inch and three quarters of an inch to give me my inch and a half sides on my two by eight. That way I know where to fit it in. And then I mark it down with my speed square on each side so I know exactly where that board's going. The only thing you don't have to go all the way down, but they should. Thank you. 
three quarters on each side of two feet, inch and a half. Go down to four foot, same thing, same thing. That's where our two by fours are gonna go. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Line, line, right here. That's where our two by four is gonna go, right here. So we know. Next, just keep chugging along. You know, two, four. They're all marked. So now we know which way to put them this way. Before we get too far ahead, we're gonna measure diagonal. Make sure we're square. So if you have a box like this, you're gonna measure from this corner to this corner, opposite to opposite, diagonally. You should have the same measurement within reason from those corners. That'll make sure you're not out of square at all. So when you're laying down your material, that it actually sits flat and not crooked. All right, so we got all of our floor joists ran, got our two end joists, and we got our middle section. I don't have enough two by eights to double up my ends, so I'm either gonna just use two by fours or uh, two by sixes or cut down two by tens or twelves. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, it's gonna be like a puzzle piece. We're gonna lock it all in. We're gonna tie all these corners in so the corners in a, and where you walk in and out isn't gonna set. We're gonna put the four by fours for skids underneath here. On top, we're putting the decking. So we're actually with the floor and the skids. We're not going to we're not going to need a bunch of spreaders in here. So that's going to save us tremendous time. I want you to notice my pattern of how I screw. I put one in the middle up top, one in the middle on the bottom, and then what I do is I stagger the two on an angle. And the reason why I do this is it ties it from moving left and right, up and down, sideways. And also, you're not putting all a, a joint here to split your board. Over time, that could split. This way, you're a little bit staggered. like our floor joists we're gonna mark our skids we're gonna put four we got four nice 16 footers laid out and again we marked where we want our four by fours on both sides from the same end so we're actually it comes down to we're going to zero two feet six feet and eight foot nothing in the middle which will be more than enough i was only going to put three what we'll do is we'll actually go around and we'll tie each we'll we'll, we'll toenail screw each one of these uh, floor joists is into the skid too. That way we won't have, we'll have more strength back and forth. And then of course, it's not gonna rip the building apart when we try to pull it if it was only fastened each end. This is that uh, fiber board. It's like recycled lumber. It's no rod, it's like a plastic. I put this in the chicken coop years ago when I built it and this stuff, it, it, it'll outlast like you, your kids, like it, but it's, uh, it's like 40 bucks a board, 35 to 40 per board. So 75% off, we have like a hundred and some bucks now into the deck versus we would have had, oh, what is it? Maybe it's an eight foot wide deck, say 10 bucks for the 16 footers. What are they, six inches wide? So we probably would have had, you know, I know well, let's, well, let's think. So we got uh, six inches and eight, that's 16 boards. So $160, yeah, we would have, plus tax, we would have had a lot more money in it and it wouldn't have lasted as long. So this is awesome for the greenhouse. So, and then another thing I scored last night from a local guy, got a Remington Power Light SL9 chainsaw. Pretty neat, some antique tools. Looks like a deer cutting, something to cut up our deer with next year. And then this is a, forget what it's called, let me see. 
This is why I messaged the guy, actually. Ah, uh, that's a Dara James. I don't know if you could see that. It's an antique cast iron table saw. And I just thought it was really neat. The guy go, it works and everything. General electric motor. The guy was getting away, uh, getting rid of it for $25. So, and he had all that other stuff for sale. So I just thought it was neat. We might even do a wood shop one day. You know, I'm a terrible woodworker. That's the only thing that I can't do. So I want to learn how to do it. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna get that all offloaded on this deck, put it on this deck and get moving on our, uh, get moving here. So keep watching. We got all of the floor joists toenail screwed in. So what we're gonna do to use lumber the smart way and get every foot we can, we're just laying out these 12 footers across the row. And I'm just gonna cut them all in a row at the joist. And in that way, it'll actually separate the back for like a shed area. And this will be the greenhouse. And instead of cutting every single one and keep laying it out, I'm just gonna line them all up, screw them all in, set my blade depth for whatever the depth of my decking is. I'm just gonna cut it all off at once and take the chunks out and then lay the other part of the deck. Also picked this uh, Estwig hammer up today. It's got the leather handle on it. It's not, it doesn't feel like soft leather. If you ever have the chance to buy one of these kind of hammers, and I love these hammers. They fit really comfortable. They swing perfect. I like the, the arc they have back for the nails. They're very good made in USA hammers. So I, I highly recommend Estwig. <laughs> Now, one thing I've learned using this fiberboard, you don't want to try to nail it. It does not work. The heads come up, and then, it, especially in a chicken coop, if you're trying to scrape up with a shovel, your shovel, it'll ruin your shovels. It'll keep hitting the, hitting the nail, and the shovel will get a bend in it. You ain't, it'll be useless. It'll, it'll, leave, uh, it'll leave material behind when you try to use it on something else flat. This down. You also want to put two in each joist, and then one in the minor, middle just on your, your end joist as you're going down. That'll tie in your corners a lot better in your side. Add into this is I'm gonna get some of these big bolts. I think they're about three quarter. And I'm gonna drill them into the sides about three, about three feet back put them in this way. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld a hook on the end so we can drag this around a little easier. On previous ones, what I did is I used the eye bolt screws on the four by fours and they tend to wanna rip out. So I'm gonna see if this works out a little better. If I had bigger bolts, I would tie these into the skids. There's the bolt that we just drilled to pull our skid. I'm gonna tighten that up, squeeze that together to where that's flush. And then I'm probably gonna V that out or V it in. And then I'm gonna put a hook of some sort on there so we can pull this.
All right, that'll be six boards we got across. We're gonna go start the other side. It'll be six and six. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that gray in the middle to offset it. So a little better of an idea I had, I'm actually gonna weld these off of the deck. I didn't even think about it. The heat, that's probably gonna catch the deck on fire on the one side, which is too late, I got the decking on. So the other side, I'm gonna V this, finish v this out set this uh, repair link in there and I'm gonna weld this all, all on this and then uh, weld this repair link shut. That should be enough to move that around. All right, that's all prepped. Today what we're gonna use, we got an old Lincoln. I got like one of those tombstone coffin AC welders. So I'm gonna use I in welds uh, 6013s here. They hold pretty good. They do make it a uh, AC 7018 if you want more tensile strength. Just a weld, it's not really that pretty of a weld. Got to undercut, but they're 6013s, they're not going to leave the best weld. And another tip, too, when you're doing 6013s, you actually want to push your when you're dragging your stick, okay? Which what you're going to want to do is push it in once your arch starts a half a rod width, half of a rod width back a full width, like this. You're just going to like kind of stitch weld it. And that's how you don't really arc. I have arc like I did here, but when you start, that's how you do it. All right, staying on this board. We need her weight to pull this board down. It's trying to go in the other one. Don't matter, All right, we sucked it in. All right, cool. No, no when she you, did it. Dad, you, when you, you said did get one. this, I no, did it. No, she did it. Go ahead, crawl in there with that wrench. You, crawl in there with this that wrench. One? Her. Me? Yeah, you already, you no, already, you were just in the film. Oh, yeah. Yeah, come on. Got it, Dad. All right, cool. Thank you very much. So I couldn't actually get in that hole to get that nut back in. <laughs> and I got the help of my daughter, Kalina, and my heart, help of my daughter, Meta, that you just seen. Uh, help me push that board down and look at that hole. Frontwoods Farmer ate way too much corn this year to fit in there. <laughs> Say bye, guys. <laughs> All right, slide that right to the edge, Meds. All right. All right, line her up. Get it lined up for Dad. That way we can uh, put her in there. All right, so I got my two helpers. They're going to help me close that gap up so we don't get the cold air in the spring blowing in our greenhouse. She's going to push. She's going to pull. Go ahead, girls. All right, and dad's gonna screw it in. Can you hold the camera with one hand? Yep. All right, here, over here. Okay. My dad's gonna screw in the thing. Okay. Right there. There we go. All and right. Let go, guys, and let's see if we close the gap still. Yes, we did. Good job. Very good job. to rip this last board down that way we could fit it right down here because they all didn't line up perfectly so we're gonna have our center aisle with this gray uh recycled uh deck wood and then we're gonna have the browns to offset it on the sides and on the last four feet we're just gonna do a womanized deck and that's gonna be a shelter for our rotor tillers and attachments and shovels and stuff and this will be the girls's and everybody's greenhouse so, so we chalk lined our ends so they're all staggered we're going to do that in the middle of this floor joist and this last four feet we're going to do with regular decking. 
So I'll cut that now. On this joist or womanized wood to the end joist. The uh, four foot part on the back shed where we're going to keep the tiller. We had some scrap gray left, so we're going to probably do three, three, and the rest womanized. I just wanted to show you what I like to do on my joints. This makes it a little bit stronger. I actually put a two by four up on the joint because I don't like that three quarter of the inch. Now I got over two inches that these boards are going to be down, so that way they'll never slip through. The scheme we went with, womanized wood in the middle, our scraps left over on the ends. That way, if we're entering or exiting all the weather, those boards should hold up longer. So it'll, uh, it'll make up for the severe weather. I cut them all out this time. I'm just gonna start drilling them all. Might need a small filler piece like we did here. But this is it, guys. This is part one of building the greenhouse. Uh, I guess you would call it the deck video. Then we're going to do the walls, then we're going to do the roof, and I'll show you in three or four parts. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, hit like, hit subscribe, and please share these videos. We're two subscribers away from our first game. And now we finally got the deck done. Lane, what do you think about this deck? I just Yeah, thank you. Thanks, buddy. Give me five. Give me five. Give me five. Hey, dude, give me some five. Thanks, bud. Yep. So the deck's done. Part one is over. The deck is built. We got everything welded up to pull it. We might pull it out of here and then make the walls and put them on. Thanks for watching.